Blog Talk Radio. Your journey begins right now. From the west coast of British Columbia to you listening around the world and blasting out into the universe, welcome to tonight's edition of Spaced Out Radio. Call us at 1-607-203-5344. Tweet us at Spaced Out Radio. Find Dave on Facebook at Spaced Out Radio. Or Skype us at Spaced Out Radio. Now, here's your host, Dave Scott. Good evening and welcome to Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for tuning in to us as we come in from the frozen Canadian tundra, battle our way past the wild animals, sidestep Bigfoot, and enter Uncle Jimbo's cabin, stoke the fire, heat this place up, and broadcast to you live on this Thursday night, early Friday morning if you're on the East Coast. Here at SOR, we do this seven days a week. We want to be your official one-stop shop when it comes to the supernatural, spiritual, paranormal, conspiratorial, and so much more. On social media, you can follow us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show, and you can ask to join our private Spaced Out Radio group, and as well as our other group, Podcast Central. On Instagram, you can follow me at Dave Scott, S-O-R. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show, and of course our website is spacedoutradio.com. At this time, as we do every night, we want to send a shout out to our fans in the Spaced Out Radio chat room, along with those at Paranormal Into the Night and Paranormal Forum. Thank you for following us. On our website, you can check out Cat's Corner. Psychic Catherine Fallman will answer one lucky listener's submitted question per week. Tonight's show is brought to you by Rivulet Reiki and Readings, providing healings in person or at a distance. Spaced Out Radio listeners receive a 10% discount on pricing. Purpleplates.com, helping heal your body, mind, and soul. Drop into their site and heal yourself today. 80,000 people a month read the new Agora newspaper. Find out what's happening around the world regarding supernatural, paranormal, political, and health. And, of course, if you have a dollar and you have an iPhone, you can download the Spirit Story Box. Spirit Story Box, the official ghost hunting app of Spaced Out Radio. We all know people who are suffering from health problems, and we all know people who are over-medicating and living in basically living pharmacies. Today, big pharma and doctors across the world are prescribing medication at highly profitable rates. One only has to look at pharma bro Martin Shkreli for that. But tonight we are going to take a look at a different way into your health, Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Really, Dave doing a health and medicine show? Do I really want to listen to this? Trust me, this one you're going to want to listen to. Now, if you're a believer in reincarnation, this is where it's going to be of major interest. What if I told you that you are being affected today by what happened to you in a previous life? Maybe that chronic pain you're suffering from was caused by something that happened centuries or lifetimes ago. I mean, we've all seen where people have weird birthmarks where maybe in a previous life they were shot, stabbed, or wounded. Could that also be the case for people who suffer from pain and disease? Sandy Mack is a past life regression therapist who believes there's something to this theory. In fact, she's worked on Spaced Out Radio's booking coordinator, Corey, who suffers from epilepsy, which is why we're doing this show. Since Corey was worked on by Sandy, Corey suffers from very few, if any, seizures. And her doctors really can't understand why. Sandy's website is designanewdestiny.com. So let's find out more about this as we bring in Sandy Mack into the Spaced Out Radio land. Sandy, thank you so much for joining us tonight. How are you? I'm outstanding, Dave. Thank you so much. And I'm so grateful to be here. Uh, Well, I'm grateful you're here, too, but I'm going to ask you to bear with me all night tonight because my little guy, who I call Little S.O.R., for Space Out Radio, he's uh, given me a cold. So I'm battling a little bit of a throat flu here, so I'm going to try and get through this as peacefully as possible with you tonight. That's fine. I'm sure everything will be just great. Mm -hmm. For sure, indeed. And thank you so much for joining us. I do want to re-mention your website. Sandy Mack's website is designanewdestiny.com. Sandy, let's tell people about you. What got you into the field of past life regression therapy and learning the spiritual aspect of healing? Well, my background uh, academically is in mental, is in, um, well, 
from a work professional point of view is in mental health. I worked as a psychiatric social worker in a mental hospital for several years when I got out of college. My actual academic background is I have degrees in criminology and fine art, so I feel I'm very qualified for everything that might come up. But, I, but when I worked in the mental hospital, what I saw was many years of people that had been um, hospitalized uh, for varying forms of everything from alcohol and addictions and retardation and mental health and, and you know, syphilis and all kinds of stuff. And at best, they were drugged up or locked up or whatever. This was in northern Wisconsin, which had one of the better mental health systems uh, in many places in the country. But, you know, they were not too, too many steps ahead of what was done in the Middle Ages. I mean, there were people that had been there 40, 50, 60 years, and I was just appalled that more wasn't being done or more wasn't able to be done or we didn't have the information or technology or skills or abilities to be able to help these people. And I just had so much compassion and felt so powerless that I really wanted to learn to do some things that would truly, truly help people. On a personal level, um, my parents were reading Edgar Cayce back in the 50s and 60s. So I was at least exposed to the idea of reincarnation. And to me, it made perfect sense. I mean, I would, for example, uh, be in Mexico or in a border town because I grew up part of my life in Texas, and um, I would see people very impoverished, beggars on the street, you know, just crippled and with little children in their arms and everything. But still I had been taught, hey, everybody's equal, everybody's the same. If somebody wants to be president, they could be president. You know, you just have to set your sights high and work hard. And I'd go... My little mind, like seven, ten-year-old mind, would say, somehow this doesn't add up. How is this person begging in the streets? How does that add up with them being born like in the Kennedy family or something like that? It's like there's no way this is going to be present. It looked to me from a direct level to be grossly unfair. But when I was exposed to the, the principles or the at least some of the readings and things of Edgar Casey. It gave me some relief because I could understand from a soul level, perhaps this person chose this for their own soul growth. So he would talk about people, for example, that had difficulty with stomach issues or, uh, you know, things that they couldn't handle with their digestion. And maybe in another life they had been a glutton or something like that. And I was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. And so it's real easy to sit in judgment um, but we never really know all this. So from where I'm coming from, Dave, I really, from my therapeutic perspective, don't even care if people believe in reincarnation. My perspective is if looking at some of these things helps them get some resolution to their problem, some relief from their suffering, um, or some answers that make sense for them, what if they made it up? It doesn't make any difference. I don't even care if they get the results that they're after. And you have to be a little bit hard-nosed on it because, I mean, there's a lot of people out there who are going to say, well, you're just making it up in your mind. And, you know, the experiences that you've seen people suffer through throughout their their conditions and throughout times as being a social worker, that you, you got your group of people who say, well, they're just nuts or they're bipolar or they belong where they deserve yep. to be right now. And there's no secondary proof on that because society doesn't allow it when it comes to the mentally handicapped. We pretty much think of them as vagrants. Right. And, you know, 65% of the world believes in reincarnation. And from my studies, I understand that most of the major religions had references in their sacred literatures that made some references to reincarnation, including the Bible. So, like I said, I don't get into arguments, is this real or not real? Uh, let me give you an example. Let's say someone has a phobia of water, or they're frightened or afraid of water. I've had one client, for example, that was so... Um, uh, upset or frightened about water, she couldn't even get her face wet in the shower. And we went back and found one or two past lives where she drowned. We cleared that up, and the the phobia, the fear was no longer there. In fact, she brought her daughter in to do some work about something and casually mentioned she was taking scuba diving lessons. 
Now, did she really make that up about those past lives, or was was it something that we were legitimately tapping into? I don't know. I believe it was legitimate, but quite honestly, from a therapeutic point of view, I don't care because the woman got relief from something that had plagued her for most of her life. And so from, like I said, from a therapeutic perspective, if it makes somebody feel better or they get rid of a problem, great. The regular medical community hasn't helped. The psychological community helped, hasn't helped. In some cases, the religious or the academic community hasn't helped. So if this helps, great, whatever works. We are talking with Sandy Mack tonight on Spaced Out Radio, designanewdestiny.com, as she goes back in your past life to heal what's happening to you in the now and in the future. And this just amazes me. Sandy, when did the light bulb go on for you when you thought, maybe I have something here, when you took people back in past life regression therapy found out what had happened to them and brought it forward to cure that fear or help fix that disease or maybe figure out why there's a large uncomfortable birthmark that makes someone uncomfortable? When did it go off? I think that I started thinking about it um, from a therapeutic point of view. When I read a book by a man that I later trained and studied with, Uh, who was named Dick, he's still alive actually, I shouldn't say was, Dick Sutphin. And he was really the person that perfected the technique of doing group past life regressions. He's written several books. One of them is called You Were Born Again to Be Together. And I uh, went and trained with him in, at that time it was Scottsdale, Arizona. It took a lot of training with him to become a past life regression therapist and um, began working with that privately, and I thought, oh, my goodness, this is going to be able to really be some solutions for people that have not been able to get solutions through any of the other medical models or protocol models that I've just mentioned. And so um, let's say, like I said, somebody has a fear of phobia, and if you can go back and clear that up in a matter of an hour, or now I can do some of these things in as little as 10 minutes, um, Why not use it? Why not use it? I mean, my principal thing has been about helping people and get resolution and some simple answers to things so they don't have to sit in the mental hospital. Not that everybody does, but that's an extreme form of where people go sometimes when they're really troubled with things. What has been the reaction to your theories from your professional colleagues? Because a lot of doctors or social workers or counselors out there tend to be five senses type people where if it's uh, diagnosed in a book, this is what the diagnosis is. Or if we have a medication to fix that, we're going to use that medication. We're not going into this type of past life regression therapy stuff. Well, um, quite a few years ago, there was an American um, movie uh, star named Shirley MacLaine, who wrote a book called Out on a Limb. That really opened it up to public looking at a little more. Spiritual and metaphysical people might have been reading Edgar Cayce and some of those kinds of things, but she brought it to the general public, and that really started people exploring things a lot. Um, There were people that had written about some past life, but then the work also got propelled a little bit further along when a very highly credentialed, qualified psychiatrist named Dr. Brian Weiss um, tapped in on past life regression. Now, he didn't necessarily believe in it. The client he was working on didn't necessarily believe in it, but they tapped in on a past life, and since then, he has, I mean, I was already doing it at the time. He wasn't even believing in it at the time. But he uh, has since written several books and does teach some classes on this at time and has spoken on this extensively. So for people that are looking, somebody with a lot of credentials or professional um, accreditation stuff, um, he's something that has added a lot to the field. Um, as far as me, I have a huge range of clients from people that are just interested in some solutions because they've tried everything and not gotten any results, all the way to more and more professionally. I'll be going to Houston in about a month, and I will be teaching a workshop um, that is uh, doing past life and doing some past life work with a bunch of Jungian therapists. So these are professional therapists 
uh, extremely qualified, uh, very credentialed, and they're and they're very interested in putting together a weekend workshop. In fact, it's already scheduled um, for me to be teaching them how to do that in their own field with their own clientele and their own um, their own professional people. We see so, so many it's people start quite a few, quite a quite a bit. I would say in the last few years, from being something kind of weirded out, but. You know, I kind of think Dave of myself is the last stop on the bus stop. If people have tried everything and they've not been able to get results, this is something a lot of times that can give them some clues. It's not 100% cure for everything, but it can certainly give some clues about what's going on. Because I believe this is one of the missing links between traditional, traditional allopathic medicine or traditional therapy and some of the spiritual and metaphysical things between like massage therapy and medicine and stuff like that. This provides a missing link because it gives yet another perspective to look at, another way of looking at uh, situations, problems, experiences, et cetera. Sandy, when you show your findings to your fellow professional colleagues, are they a little bit amazed by the results of your studies that you were getting and has it opened their minds up that maybe this is something they need to look into a little bit further you know sometimes it does but to be perfectly honest i don't spend a lot of time trying to talk people into it (laughs) i'm just kind of like past it i've been doing this for more than 30 years and the people that really need to find out about this know me or the information is out there in the world now this is not like you know, many, many years ago when we didn't have the Internet, there weren't movies and stuff like that. Now there's so much out there about reincarnation. And um, I just, I I don't spend, I mean, a woman has written a book about me. I've been quoted in a variety of places. I've been on TV and radio and lots of stuff about things. And um, so I don't spend a lot of time trying to convince people that, uh, would not ordinarily be open to it. Um, but I certainly have worked with a lot of quote unquote professional or scientific or medical type people um, in their own personal areas, getting resolutions to some of their own challenges. I have a question from Dino in Paranormal Into the Night. He is asking, Sandy, why would someone have a phobia on heights? He has it really bad and panic attacks if he gets near someplace high and has to look down. Well, think about it, because often it's quite metaphorical to what the situation is about. Now, I've spoken about water. So heights, someone may have been uh, fallen off a cliff. They may have been thrown from a cliff or someplace high. They may have fallen off a building. They might have been in, in some kind of construction industry or something and fallen down. Um, they might have been sacrificed, like in another life in Hawaii, they threw you into a volcano or something like that. But my suspicion is it had to do probably with that. Um, my experience with people that, for example, were in plane crashes, uh, that doesn't usually have to do with heights thing. It usually has to do with, like, being thrown off or falling down or slipping or falling something from a high place, and either they died or they were severely injured from that. And so there, there's like a, well, I don't know how to really explain it scientifically, and I don't know if science has got something that they can all agree on, but it's like there's so memory or so imprint of what happened that is still carried at some level, whether you call it the DNA or the genetic or just the matrix of the consciousness of which we're all constructed, that does remember this. And it's going like, okay, you better be careful you get to the edge. You know what happened last time. You better be careful. So your body, there's like body memory or or soul memory, and it it carries that. And um, so that's that's something that's usually relatively easy to clear up. I have another Just question go back from to those lives and and kind of straighten right. the thing out and bring that bring that information forward. I reassure the person. I reassure the person in the other life, and I reassure the person's body now that it doesn't have to carry that trauma or that soul memory any longer. 
I have another question from Paranormal End of the Night. This one from Claudia. Are schizophrenics and some other mental illnesses, are they like living out their past lives in this life? And is the veil never closed for them? Is it like living two lives at once? That's a good question and a good theory. I don't have an absolute answer on that. When I worked in the mental hospital, we did have a lot of people there that were schizophrenic. And I do think that a lot of these people are extremely sensitive. They may be tapping in on other lives. They may be tapping in in other dimensions. And that, uh, that, that like I would say, the veils are very thin. So they're perceiving multiple realities. Another situation that could be going on with them, because they're extremely sensitive, is that they may have <clears throat> other energies affecting them. And by that I mean discarded entities, uh, extraterrestrial presences, etc. Now one thing that I do know is that when someone uses drugs or alcohol, particularly drugs to any excess, and I mean not just street drugs, but I'm talking like psychotropic drugs, uh, lots of antibiotics, those type of things. For people who can see clairvoyantly, they see huge holes in that person's aura and their energy field. It's like Swiss cheese. And, and as a result of that, there are discarded entities or lost souls or spirits or ghosts or creepy crawlies or whatever you want to call them that can come in and affect that person's energy field. So um, often there are, I really wouldn't necessarily call it possession, but there would be other influences that could also be affecting that person. So it's not a simple yes, no answer. I don't know if that's helpful for this person or not. Maybe they could respond back to you. Well, we will wait for Claudia to see what Claudia has to say in regards to that. We are talking with Sandy Mack tonight on Space Out Radio. She is a past life regression therapist. Her website, designandnewdestiny.com. We have about four minutes before we're going to take our first break of the night. Do you find that most of your healing techniques or what you are able to find out about people's lives, are, is it coming more from women or men? Or is it a combination of both that just really want to try and get to some answers in their own life? a combination of both there might be a few more women because generally speaking women at this point in time are a little more open to these type of things um but much much more uh, men are involved than used to be let's say 20 or 30 years ago but like i said i'm one of the people like last stop and the best stop when they've tried a lot of things and they're not getting any resolution people are willing to try almost everything i mean especially if it's not illegal or immoral or something like that. And if it if it contradicts with their religion but they're willing to consider it, I say, well let's believe like it like this might be true for just this hour or this session and then when you leave you can say, Oh, I just made that up. But I usually suggest, well, you didn't sit out in the parking lot and make up the story, did you? And the parallels, the patterns, often the emotions, the things that come up are very, very amazing and incredible. And the dots that get connected are just, I'm I'm never bored with my work. I'm so grateful to be able to do it because the patterns and the things that I see and the resolutions we can get is so rewarding to me personally. I really should be paying people to let me work on them. <laughs> CJ is asking in the Space Out Radio chat room, how often do you find that someone's past life was that of a different species, say of an extraterrestrial? I think that there has been um, more of that coming to light lately because I think of the, now we're kind of shifting gears to look at things from a much bigger perspective here. Um, I think that there are more people being aware that they may have had other lives in other planes, levels, dimensions, even with other species perhaps have some past lives as an extraterrestrial. And my understanding is that there are more of these people being born on the planet at this time, particularly from some of the really positive ones, like from the Pleiadians, that are here to support 
the ascension process or the unfolding or the evolutionary growth of this planet. So that's becoming a little more uh, a little more well known, a little more revealed, so to speak. But as far as other species, I don't see that a lot. But there are being there are people that have had or feel that they've had past lives where they have been some of the highly evolved, like the whales, the dolphins, uh, those type of things. To be perfectly honest, I've never found anybody that had a past life as a cockroach or anything like that. Sandy, I'm going to get you to hold on here as we are going to take our first break of the night. We are talking with Sandy Mack. Her website, designanewdestiny.com. Her job is past life regression therapy, and you know what? It's amazing. She can tie it from what happened long ago into what's happening to you today. It's a very interesting story indeed. And after this, we're going to talk about Corey, my booking coordinator, who had a session with Sandy, and it's really helped her out. You're listening to Space Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott. We'll be right back. This is Patrick Webster Small, and I'm going to bring you the Webster Phenomena right here on Space Out Radio, Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Every week, I'm going to bring you the freshest information on the globe. I'm bringing you guys the truth, extraterrestrials in the sky, prophecy, chemtrails, rainbow spot, the seventh angel, biblical skies, ancient gods, ghosts, spirits, see it, hear it. So let's do this every Monday night. I'll see you back here at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Did you know that Spaced Out Radio is live seven days a week? This is Jim Tyson, host of Spaced Out Weekend. You can listen to my show, Spaced Out Weekend, every Saturday and Sunday night starting at 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific. On Spaced Out Weekend, we like to delve into the paranormal, even the newest technologies that have enhanced modern-day ghost hunting. And sometimes, we'll get a little creative and dabble into the crypto world, UFOs, and much, much more. So tune in at www.spacedoutradio.com on the weekends and listen to me, Jim Tyson, on Spaced Out Weekend. Hi there, this is Jolene with Rivulet Reiki and Reading, and I want you to relax. Let me help you chill out and get in touch with your body, mind, and soul. In this busy world, sometimes we need to let go, and this is where I can help. Visit my website, rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivuletrnr, or my Facebook page, Rivulet r and to set up an appointment for relaxation, Reiki, or readings, no matter where you are. Spaced Out Radio listeners will also receive 10% off their first visit. It's time for you to make time for you. The Spaced Out Radio Network can be found at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is Dave Scott. Here you can join the latest on our weekly shows and news from around the world involving UFOs, cover-ups, cryptids, ghosts, and more. Read articles from our very talented staff and check out our weekly tarot card reading from psychic Catherine. You can also sign up for free on our forum and tell us about your experiences. Spacedoutradio.com. Always live, always interactive. Ready to find out what's flying up in the sky? Me too. Hi there, this is Rich Giordano. Please join me every Sunday night at 7 for the AZ UFO Show. It's a fast and compelling two-hour show on UFOs, extraterrestrials, conspiracy theories, and much more. Every week we will have great guests and great topics to try and answer the ultimate question, are we alone in this universe or not? 
So tune in to the AZ UFO show with me, Rich Giordano, right here on the Spaced Out Radio Network at spacedoutradio.com. Would you like to connect with Dave and his guests? Learn more at spacedoutradio.com for the latest news, features, photos, and articles. Spacedoutradio.com is where you can stay up to date on what's happening around the world and up in the stars. And now, back to Dave Scott. Welcome back to the second half hour of Space Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for joining us. Tomorrow night on the show, we have our SOR roundtable. We're changing it up a little bit. It's going to be a lot more paranormal and ufological than what we normally do. So stick around for tomorrow night, Space Out Radio. Your calls, your questions will be addressed. So you guys will have some audience participation in that as well. Hey, if you want to follow us on social media, you can do so on Twitter, at Space Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Space Out Radio Show. You can also join our Space Out Radio group as well as our other group, Podcast Central. On Instagram, I can be followed Dave Scott SOR, and of course our website is spacedoutradio.com. Tonight we are talking with Sandy Mack. She is a professional past life regression therapist. She helps people learn from what happened in the past to what's affecting them in the future. Her website is de- designanewdestiny.com. This is a topic we've never tackled on this show, so I thought it was quite interesting. And what I did here, guys and gals, is I brought in my booking coordinator, Corey. Corey is the one who told me that I had to get Sandy Mack on the air, and she pressured the living heck out of me. And when I heard her story, I absolutely knew that I had to bring Sandy on the air. And so, Sandy and Corey, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hey there. No, I did not pressure you like heck. <laughs> it was a suggestion. <laughs> it, and well, I think it was a great suggestion, and I, I will I will say that you twisted my arm. No, it's not really the way it works. But, Corey, I would li- love it if you don't mind to start off here to tell us about your epilepsy and how long you've been affected by that. Hmm. Well, I've had it for about 10 years. I think I had it for about a year before I realized that I had it. Um, I was feeling when I'd have these little petite mal seizures, it was feeling like it was a past life memory. And I thought I was tapping into my past lives because it's just a weird thing. If you don't have it, you probably don't uh, understand it. But you just start swirling and you feel like you're you're going into a different dimension. And that's what it feels like when I have a seizure. Um, it wasn't until I had a grand mal seizure that I was taken to the hospital and then they did tests and they found out that I actually did have epilepsy and that's what I was having all this, this probably the past year. So I've had it for 10 years um, before I met Sandy, that is. And um, I met the... her at... Go ahead. Go ahead, Corey. Oh, I was just saying I, I met her at the conference. Uh, plugged to the question, last... www westers.ca and I did um, a session with her and uh, she was so intriguing she reminds me of this female version of Indiana Jones that I decided (laughs) to do her her, 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 it's true I decided to do her uh, post-conference workshop which was Mm -hmm. healing past lives Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, yeah Corey, I would like to ask you, for people who've never had a seizure or epilepsy, what is it that you go through? What brings it on? Um, I don't know what brings it on. I, I know that diet, exercise, sleep, I, I know sleep is a big thing, um, but I don't know what I don't know what brings it on. It just kind of I think that it varies quite a lot, Corey. It could be anything from flashing lights to, like you said, sleep stress situations, any number yeah. of things. I had a good friend that had a son that has struggled with epilepsy a good part of his life and even been up to Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. And um, they just don't always know specifically what triggers it. So it could be any number of range of things. Yeah, and, and I, um, I think it's different for everybody too. Yep, yeah, it is. Yeah. So, Sandy, when you first heard Corey's story, what made you think that you could help her out? 
Well, she was like she's saying. She attended the conference. We spoke, uh, I think, several times about a number of things, and I think we we used her as a as an example. And um, she tapped right in on it, something, and we I just used the regular technique that I did, and we went in and cleared it up. I mean, I didn't think, oh, maybe I could do this or not do that. I mean, we just went in and did it. Didn't take very long at all, did it, Corey? No, it's about. 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. Um, yeah. What what happened, just to say a bit of a story. So we were going to do this on each other. She was going to teach us all how to do this on each other. And she said, you know, does anybody have an affliction in your, uh, in your present life that could be affected by a past life? And people started saying things. And I thought, oh, maybe my epilepsy had never even occurred to me before. She said, yeah, maybe. And then so we were going to break into pairs and do it. And she said, well, I'm going to do it on somebody first. Does anybody want to try it? And I was like, yes, because. Yeah, we you know, wanted to do an work example as a demonstration somebody. to yeah. the group so they could understand some of the techniques. Yeah. And she volunteered yeah. for that. And I thought, well, this will be great. Yeah. yeah. So I sat there. I didn't really actually think it would work, to be totally honest with you. But I was willing to give it a try, definitely. And after I sat in her chair for a couple of minutes, I got a really bad headache on the same side of the, my head, actually, that I get my seizures on. And so Sandy started dowsing, doing, using her pendulum and doing some dowsing and saying, you know, was this from a past life? Yes. Where was it from? She went all, started going all around the world to find the place. And I knew she was going to go to Egypt. And I was actually going to Egypt in a month from that time. So that didn't surprise me. Um, we talked, figured out that it came from... I was stoned to death, and uh, and I ended up telling her that I've, I have a headache. I had it for about ten minutes before I had told her that, and she said, "Well, let's get rid of the let's get rid of the let's uh, fix the the rock, the main rock that did the, the damage." Stone. And then she said, "Yes, <laughs> uh, the stone that did the damage." And she said, "Well, where did it hit you?" And I put her hand on the spot on the side of my temple where. I was feeling the headache, and I said, right there. And she actually put two hands on the side of my head, which I thought was kind of funny because I was thinking it was rock, but it was actually a boulder. And she ripped it off the side of my head, and I sat there for a second. And I thought, oh, well, I still have my headache. And then, like, two seconds later, my headache was gone. And then I was thinking, hmm, maybe there really is something to this because my headache is gone. So we did a little bit more work about healing some emotional issues because of that. And, um, and, and that was it basically. I didn't know. So obviously I don't, didn't know if I was healed or not. Um, I always forget, forgot to take my medication and after about a week or so I realized, Oh, I haven't even taken a pill and I haven't had a seizure. So then I thought, well, you know, I'd, I want to be safe while I drive a vehicle and things like that. So did I want to take a pill to know I wasn't going to have a seizure or just kind of go with this to see if I was actually healed or not? So I decided to not have any pills. And it's been five months now. At about four months, I did have a little blip. I talked to Sandy and um, we did another little mini past life regression and worked on some things. And so that's, that was a month ago. Uh, so it's been five months without a seizure. And for myself, if I did not have a pill, either between a day to maybe five days, I would have a seizure. So it's been five months now, and I haven't had a seizure. That's amazing. Well, the one you admit. It is amazing. because Yeah, and it's amazing because... I mean, that's it, something, that's something concrete, this, right? Yeah, she went into this not feeling like she made up a story. It didn't matter if she believes in it or not. But if medically it shows up and she can have a clear driver's license and be able to function in, in the world in a, in a more resourceful way, what difference does it make whether she was stoned to death in another life or not? I mean, it doesn't really make any difference from my perspective, but it makes a huge difference in this young lady's life. And you know what? I, I'm very thankful for that because Corey, since she joined the Spaced Out Radio team, has been just an absolute blessing to me in helping me out and taking a lot of pressure and stress off of me. So the fact that she has gotten healthy or healthier over this is just amazing. Corey, how do you feel now since this happened with your daily 
life because i mean there's things you have to do every day do you still watch for the warning signs do you still stay away from say strobing lights or something that could cause a migraine or another headache that could trigger something um i've never i've been in like bars with strobing lights and i don't think that's ever affected me i know it's not good um and i don't want to you know push my luck but that's never been a factor I don't have any um, warning signs. It just happens or it doesn't happen. So there's really no difference in my life except that I am seizure-free. What does your doctor say? Um, he was he was kind of open. He, you know, he's a neurologist. And he said to me, well, he says, I don't really... I can't really condone things like this. I don't, that wasn't the exact word he said. He said, because I'm a scientist, right? Um, he said, but, he said, I, he, he says, I do understand that people do these things and, and you know, it, it, it can work, but he wasn't going to, um, you know, he said, fully like endorse he said, he's it, a scientist. Huh? <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, no. No, and, and I understand well, I that and I can appreciate that. I was to even share this information with him and, you know, kind of plant the seed of considering there's more than just allopathic medicine, Newtonian science mm-hmm. to consider that uh, has effects on us in the world. Yes, hey, he must hey. know that. I mean, he's a smart mm-hmm. guy. I, I did say, well, there's a few books, you know, Dr. Brian Weiss, and I said, there's a few books that, you know, there's lots of evidence that this is real, right? And he just kind of smiled. You know what? I had a similar situation on a different topic with my family doctor because I felt like I was having really bad chest pains and it it, it was scaring me and he just happened to be working in the ER that day. And when he asked me what had happened if I had strained my chest muscles, I was kind of embarrassed to tell him because it had happened five days after I had a channeling experience with one of our former guests. Her name is Samantha Mowat. She's an ET contactee. And we were contacting, through me, the extraterrestrials where she comes from. Now, I don't know where it was, but I sure as heck know they took me there in this channeling session. And when they brought me back, they almost brought me through like a wormhole. You know when you see on Star Trek or Star Wars when the Millennium Falcon or the USS Enterprise is going through that time warp and there's all the stars that just become straight beams of light? Well, that's what I saw. And I remember it straining my neck and my chest, and after I got out of that, I started coughing so much that it absolutely went to my doctor, and I'm like, I have a problem here. And I strained my chest muscles with it because of it. And so I know what it's like, Corey, to be able to tell your doctor something that's supernatural that happened and get that look with the eyebrow raised. It's kind of funny. I think it's great. Yeah, well, like I really said. applaud the bravery of anybody who's willing to do that to try to broaden uh, these physicians. Um, well, I wouldn't say narrow, but limited perspective of reality. And so I really appreciate people who have the courage to do that. I realize it's not everybody's cup of tea, and um, but I appreciate those people who are willing to do that. Now, Sandy, Corey had said this had taken about 10 to, or 15 to 20 minutes for you to work on her. Do you remember the yep. story quite quite vividly, and could you walk us through it? The story of her being stoned to death? Yeah, from the time you started up until the time when you started regressing her and what had happened. Well, she can probably remember it even better than I can, but I would... I, I, the, the technique that I've got really developed uh, has gotten so simple and so much quicker than what I was historically taught. When I originally trained to do past life regression, um, I would spend at least two hours with a person. Uh, I know a lot of hypnotists um, that would spend one or two sessions before they would even actually attempt to take someone into another life, just sort of acclimating them to the idea of being in hypnosis or an altered state. The original induction that I was taught uh, took 17 minutes, and we were able to do this in, like she said, probably 15 minutes or less. Um, Because I'm also a professional dowser or quester, as they would say, in Western Canada, 
Um, I use a dowsing instrument, a pendulum usually, but I can use any number of instruments to be able to ask information. So I would say, ask if her uh, history with epilepsy and seizure had any past life connections, and I got yes. And then I ask if we had permission to be able to seek out this information and maybe get some resolution, and I got yes. Then I started to uh, identify some of the specifics. So was she male? Was she female? How old was she? How, what was the time frame on this? 50 years, 100 years, 1,000 years, whatever. And then, like she said, I started trying to find out where, North America, South America, Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and was able to narrow it down. Then I I told her to go inside. I didn't even do a long induction. Uh, like she said, she really had a sense because she's obviously an intuitive and pretty sensitive tuned in young lady um, that I was probably going to be tapping in on something in, in or around Egypt. And she just went immediately into that lifetime and we went to the experience of what it was, which was being stoned to death. Now, there is a number of experiences, of course, that people can have. And my experience, because I've worked with a lot of people that have been stoned to death, is, including myself, is that it isn't uh, every single stone, but usually the first stone that hits somebody or the first blow. And this was obviously a big stone. It wasn't just like a little pebble that somebody threw at her. This was now, I would think of a boulder as something that might weigh several hundred pounds, but it was definitely a bigger stone. And I need to kind of take a moment here and explain that I personally am not psychic. I don't visualize any of these things. I'm, I am letting the person access their own direct information. It's not coming through me like it would a psychic or a seer or something and me telling them. They are accessing their own direct information and their own memories. And so she felt that. She had the discomfort in her head. And then using a shamanic technique that I also teach about, I was able to remove that energetic imprint of that really large stone slash boulder that was apparently the first blow that hit her. And I would suspect if it didn't kill her, it certainly, um, you know, seriously wounded her. And then if it was a proper stoning, you know, that other people threw stones as well until this person was dead. What a horrific way to go. uh, Then I did some additional work that I'm able to do to have her get some resolution of that. Uh, Sometimes uh, I invite the person to give responsibility back to the person or persons that did it. Um, Sometimes they want to do some forgiveness. And then I clear it from that lifetime, and then I clear it from the person's body in present time as well. So we we take care of what I would sort of call like the soul memory or the soul imprint. The information can still be there. They can have the knowledge and the wisdom and the, and the memory, but I release the trauma so that the body no longer has to carry the trauma from the situation of inter-experience that occurred. Is that helpful? Yeah, yeah, that's very helpful. Now, I'd like to get Corey's opinion on this. So were you a little hesitant, Corey, in going through with this with uh, Sandy? Because it's something that, you know, somebody who is suffering from epilepsy, I mean, I understand you'd want to, you know, give anything a try from that horrific disease. But were you a little hesitant at all? And take me through what you went through. Well, I definitely was willing to give it a try. And I didn't actually realize that we were going to kind of do a past life regression. And when I realized that, I started freaking out in the chair because I've tried to do four or five uh, times before, but I've never seen anything. And pe- some people say that when you have a past life regression, you you actually see who you are. You see your clothing you're wearing. You see the outlines and you see everything. Well, I've never been able to see. So every time I've tried to do one, I've always said, I can't do it. I'm not doing it. I can't do it. And Sandy just kept saying, well, tell me the first thing that comes into your head. And I was like, oh, man, I hate that because I hate having to rely on my intuition. So so I was sitting there thinking, oh, I wish I wasn't sitting here right now. But she's like, say the first thing that comes into your head. So I did. And she'd say, yep. And there was a couple of times where – I kind of wavered and I didn't say what I was really thinking. 
but I said something else. And she'd say, hmm, no, I don't think so. And I'd say, okay, well, I, I was going to say this. And she said, yep, that's it. Um, and I was the one that said, um, did they stone people in, in Egypt? And she said, yep. And I said, I think I was stoned to death. Um, so I was, I was quite reluctant and really not really even believing in myself. And like I had written a story for the questions about this, and I said, it, I, I didn't even know was I making it up. It didn't even matter in the end because it helped, right? But I know and I what I can inject up, here but. for just a moment is that when the person's going through that experience, I'm also simultaneously using my dowsing instrument, in that case a pendulum, to douse the accuracy or the or the uh, uh, compatibility with what they're saying or seeing with whatever it is that they're getting. And um, I always defer to what they're getting, but, you know, there could have been several situations that went on. So when she said, well, did, was it stoned? And, and my pendulum said, yes, that's accurate. So then we went down that, we followed that trail, so to speak, and found out what was going on. Sandy, what kind of pendulum do you use? Because I use a that pendulum make a as bit well. Of difference, to tell you the truth. I, I'll use, I have a lot of different ones. And I use stone ones, I use metal ones. If I'm really stuck and I don't have anything, I can use a necklace, I can use my car keys, to be perfectly honest. People get into a lot of kind of ideas, oh, don't let anybody else touch your pendulum, or, you know, if it's rose quartz, you're going to get this, or if it's hematite, you're going to get that. My experience with being a professional dowser uh, for many, many years, literally since the 70s, is if somebody, it's not about the pendulum. It's about the skill and the focus and the resourcefulness of the actual dowser or quester or whatever you want to call it. The type of pendulum is very secondary or tertiary or whatever you would want to call it. I guess the reason why I'm asking is there's a lot of people out there who use pendulums. I use a pendulum myself. I find that my pendulum, which is made out of sodalite, uh, that I'm very attracted to uh, works in almost an instantaneous co- connection with one of my spirit guides. So are you asking the body to talk to you through the pendulum or are you asking a spirit guide or some sort of angelic guide to guide you, you know, with what a, happened? That's a great question, um, Dave. Um, I teach dowsing uh, professionally. I teach a two day intensive. I call it the ultimate dowsing intensive and one of the things that i pass out in my class is a chart and it says to whom am i addressing my question and it includes all of those things that you've mentioned spirit guides great creator the diva kingdom uh maybe extraterrestrials my higher self uh any number of things and so i think it varies from person to person I think you can probably specify, but when I ask for myself, show me where is the information coming from that I'm accessing, it actually always points to the section on the dowsing chart that says, I'm accessing the Akashic Records, and I'm sure many of your listeners have some knowledge of what I'm talking about. So I feel that for these type of things, when I'm working with Corey or other past life, I'm tapping into the Akasha. That's really that interesting. It, sort of? Yeah, it, that's very interesting indeed because the soul connection, and I've told a lot of people this over the time when they ask me, you know, I'm walking down the street or I'm talking to friends or something, and they say, well, how are you connected? You know, and uh, I always tell them that the soul is the only thing that we have left that is truly connected to God or a higher power or a higher being, whatever you want to believe in. And if you follow what that soul says, you're able to get a lot of information and process a lot of information about what's going on. Right. Yep. Good point. Exactly. So I think different people would be – somebody might be able to. They've got a great connection with their spirit guide. They've got a high enough, high enough connection or a high enough guide because um, some everybody's guides aren't necessarily in their highest and best good. We we do know that, right? So sometimes people could have guides that are a little bit mischievous or not necessarily highly evolved. Um, if they've got a good enough connection with a good enough guide, they might very easily be able to access the information with that. But that's where my information seems to come from when I'm working 
in this area of past life work, as I do a lot of other kinds of dowsing and things with my pendulums, of course, but for the past life aspect of my work, I think that's where the information comes from. And it would possibly vary from person to person, honestly. And, Corey, you're a major believer in this now. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Like I said, <laughs> I, would go, I would go from either one day to five days without a pill, and I would have a seizure. And it's been, well, five months now. So definitely a believer. Yeah, so it doesn't make any difference if she made it up or not. I guarantee you she didn't sit outside the conference room and say, I think I'm going to go in and make up this story about getting head, hit in the head with a big rock. No, it didn't work quite like that. So there's a lot of misunderstanding, Dave, about past life work. Uh, people uh, sort of just spot off about, well, everybody thinks they were Cleopatra or Napoleon, and that's what they pick up. You know, what I can say from a professional point of view is that's simply not true. In doing literally thousands of people in the last 30-some, 40 years, however many years, I've only met two people that I feel were simply kind of making up some sort of story. One guy thought he was James Dean, and but when I really would start asking questions, he didn't have them. So he was just trying to fulfill some kind of ego or fantasy thing. But I've not met um, Cleopatra, nor have I met Napoleon, or people that thought they were those famous people. In many cases, it was a fairly simple lifetime. They were in China, you know, like say the year 1200, and they worked in the rice fields, and they got sick and died or something. So when I target, not necessarily from a therapeutic point of view, but even curiosity, I'll ask for a life that particularly relates to what's going on now or a present concern, like a fear, a phobia, a health concern, a relationship, a reoccurring dream, um, an area of interest, something that they love or they're curious or they're excited about, like art or music or something like that. And um, so we can find a lifetime or lifetimes that relate to some things that they have in mind that's important to them now. I have met a few people that have had lives that have had verifiable um, uh, experiences that we could go back historically and check. Uh, found one signer of the Constitution of the United States, not necessarily an important person, but we got the name, went and checked, and yes, that signature was on the Constitution. One of the more dramatic cases that I had, and this doesn't happen in every situation, but it does occasionally, because everybody doesn't get extremely dramatic visualizations or pictures and some people get impressions but they don't visualize they might hear it they might have just an intuitive sense of it um i had a young man quite a few years ago he was actually in high school when he came to me originally to do some work he was an extremely good subject one of these deep level people that literally relives it uh we did two or three lifetimes we found when he was a roman soldier he was in the American Civil War. He was in Alaska. And then I told him, I want you to go to the past life that was the most recent past life in present time. And he pops into that life and he goes, shh, don't say anything. Charlie's over there. Now, for those maybe not Canadian, but American would certainly understand that in the 60s, when we say Charlie's over there, we're talking about the Vietnam War because that's what they would charge, call the Viet Cong, the enemy, quote-unquote enemy, was Charlie. So I realized exactly what he was saying. He was almost whispering, don't say anything, Charlie's over there. So I said, tell me what your name is. And he was able to give me a full name. It wasn't like John or Bill. He gave me a full name, a first name and a last name. I had the presence of mind, I don't know where it came from, but I said, I want you to look down and give me the number off of your dog tag. Now, for those of your listeners who don't know, a dog tag is a metal plate on a chain that at least American soldiers, probably Canadian as well, wear, wear, so it's got their name and their sort of their rank and then their kind of their serial number, so to speak. And my understanding is when somebody would pass, they would often put that dog tag in the mouth so they would know who this dead body belonged to. I told that that student, 
look down and give me the number off your dog tag, and he did. He was able to give me a number. Now, I think in that lifetime he died shortly afterwards. He was killed in Vietnam. That young man's father had some connections at the Pentagon. They were able to take that name and that number and look it up, and it was accurate. And this young man went to Washington, D.C., and found himself on what we call the wall, the, the list or the monument of many of the Americans that died and were killed in Vietnam. He found himself on the wall from a recent past life. Now, that wow. story was written about in one of the books that was written about me called Tales of Reincarnation by a woman named Rosemary Ellen Guiley, and that was one of the featured mm-hmm. stories in there. Everybody doesn't get that level of accuracy, but some people do. And um, so when I said, what was the lesson? What did you learn from these, this lifetime or these lifetimes? And you know what his answer was? War is not the answer. Mm-hmm. So I know this young man will never forget that. For sure. I'm going to get you to hold on here, Sandy. I've got Corey on hold as well. We are going to go to our break at the top of the hour. We are talking with Sandy Mack, designanewdestiny.com. She is a past life regression therapist. She is with us talking about healings and how to heal from past life into today. It's amazing. Her story with Corey absolutely gives me goosebumps. I absolutely love it. You're listening to Space Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott. We'll be right back after this break. The Phoenix Lights, Roswell, secret military aircraft, flying saucers. Let's check out the sky together. Hi, this is Rich Giordano, host of the AZ UFO show right here on the Spaced Out Radio Network. Every Sunday night at 7, we hit the airwaves to talk about the phenomenon of unidentified flying objects and more. We want to hear your stories. Maybe you've seen what many others have seen. Only one way to find out, the AZ UFO show on Sunday nights on the Spaced Out Radio Network on spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is James Tyson, host of Spaced Out Weekends, and I know you're enjoying tonight's show with Dave Scott on Spaced Out Radio. I just wanted to remind you that Spaced Out Radio continues on the weekends with me. On Spaced Out Weekend, we hit the airwaves at www.spacedoutradio.com starting at 10 p.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. Eastern. We have great guests with interesting chats regarding all things paranormal, supernatural, cryptozoological, and much, much more. So tune in to Spaced Out Weekend and give us a listen. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the place have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit and Expect a miracle. Need a break but don't have the time? Tired of life's running around? Hi, this is Jolene from Rivulet Relaxation and Readings. Let me help you in your time of need. From Reiki to Realm Readings, I can help provide you therapy for your mind, body, and soul. Check out my website at rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivuletrnr. And if you're a listener of Spaced Out Radio, receive 10% off your first session. Rivulet Relaxation and Readings. And don't forget to give my Facebook page a like. It's time for you to make some important time for you. The Spaced Out Radio Network can be found at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is Dave Scott. Here you can join the latest on our weekly shows and news from around the world involving UFOs, cover-ups, cryptids, ghosts, and more. Read articles from our very talented staff and check out our weekly tarot card reading from psychic Catherine. You can also sign up for free on our forum and tell us about your experiences. SpacedOutRadio.com. Always live, always interactive. The Webster Phenomena airs on Spaced Out Radio on Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. I'm your host, Patrick Webster Small, and I discovered extraterrestrials in the atmosphere, which led me to more discoveries developing the Webster Phenomena, which is the occurrence of extraterrestrials throughout nature. I will explain the Webster phenomena and all my recent discoveries every Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time, right here on Spaced Out Radio. 
You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Want to call in to Space Out Radio? You can. 1-607-203-5344. You can tweet us at Spaced Out Radio or send us a message on Facebook at Spaced Out Radio. And now, back to the show, here's Dave Scott. Welcome back for hour number two of Spaced Out Radio tonight. How are you? Got some new music coming for the show. I'm not ready to make that full announcement just yet, but we are changing everything up. I'm really excited about it. Not the confirmation today that we can go through with it. So we're changing things up for when we launch on Spreaker here very, very soon. Now, tomorrow night on the show, we have our SOR roundtable. We're changing it up a little bit. We're going to go a little bit more paranormal. We're going to go a little bit more ufological, spiritual. And we want more questions and comments from you, the listener, as we take on with our panel, the Space Out Radio Roundtable, last Friday, every month, last Friday already. Amazing. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. You can follow us on Instagram, Dave Scott, S-O-R. And on Facebook, Spaced Out Radio Show. You can join our Spaced Out Radio group as well as our other group, Podcast Central. And as well, you can now access and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show, where we are downloading our archives to that area. Our website, once again, Space. we bring in Sandy Mack once again. We... Uh, she is a past life regression therapist. Her website, design at newdestiny.com. If you want to check it out, get some healing for yourself. We heard an incredible story with my booking coordinator, Corey, in the last half hour about how Sandy took her back through to ancient times in Egypt where Corey was stoned to death, and that has possibly led to her epilepsy that she suffers from today. And Corey hasn't had very many, if any, seizures since her regression therapy with Sandy. Sandy, so thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm glad you're here. Thanks so much, Dave. It's just delightful to be with uh, a group, <laughs> an audience of your people that are obviously so versed in everything from Bigfoot to UFOs to past life to, you know, alternative realities. Uh, this is my world that I live in, and I have to kind of uh, shift and adjust when I'm talking to people that are a little more narrow in per- their perspective, but I feel so mm-hmm. comfortable about talking about these things with you and your people. It's it's really delightful. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. And you know what? I, I tend to think that I am very lucky with the audience that I have because they are, are so knowledgeable. You know, they really do. I have uh, a dedicated household in the Spaced Out Radio chat room. Uh, we've built a dedicated household in Paranormal Into the Night, same as at Paranormal Forum. And you know what? For all of them, they really keep me on my toes because they are so knowledgeable and they are so ready. And And they ask, and we ask for that audience participation. And that's one of the keys to this show is the audience participation. And, and you know what? They To me, they make it a heck of a lot better than what we truly are. So I really you know, tip my hat to everybody who takes part in this show. It's not just me. That's great. I don't think I've ever been exposed to a, a venue, a forum, uh, an opportunity that is broad, so broad in its scope to be inclusive of everything. I just came back two days ago from the International UFO Congress down in uh, the Phoenix area, and you know I've attended and spoken and been involved in a, a lot of these different things over the years, um, but to have something that is inclusive of all these range of stuff is just really a gift, really delightful. I'm just so glad to know you and your people exist. Well, I'm glad that you are welcome to join us anytime on this show. It's uh, it's fantastic <laughs> to have you. Uh, I would love to, speaking of our audience, get to a few questions that they have that have been piling up right. in the last half hour. I want to start off with McSheeple in the Space Out radio chat room. Have the Akashic records ever been hacked? Um. 
I've never heard of that idea. I don't believe so. Um, I don't think they've been hacked. No, I don't. I don't know, but I, I would not expect so. Yeah, because there's always some type of people out there who believe that whether it's a, a bad a degree of aliens or bad human beings who are trying to tap into that centralized spiritual location that believe that, you know what, maybe life has been altered through the Akashic Records and, and adjusting them. But you're, you're confident in your what you know that they haven't been. I don't think so. Um, you know, I just, that's just my personal opinion, but I don't think so. I think that there may be beings or per, quote unquote perceived guides or even perceived extraterrestrial preferences that may be telling somebody they're tapping into the Akashic and they may not be, they may be giving them some other kind of story or whatever. So it may not be the true Akashic records or they may only be getting limited information from that. But I would say the actual Akashic, as I, as I understand it, uh, is is sort of in a sacred or spiritual place, so to speak, if we're trying to think of it linear thinking, that is inaccessible or infallible in terms of being hacked. But that's a great question. Claudia in Paranormal Into the Night has a question for you. Does genetic memory cover generations? Do we all ca carry to our families generations of memories of their past lives, or is it just the past lives of our own memories? And she I follows this up by... all of the above. That's a great question, Claudia. I think it's all of the above and both. One of the things that I incorporate in my work is clearing some trapped and underlying emotions, which has to do with some of the work with the emotion code and the body code work of Dr. Bradley Nelson. And so I know that we can carry inherited trapped emotions that can go back 5, 10, 15, 20 generations ago from an ancestor that that energetically got passed on and that we might be carrying uh, you know, uh, an emotion that they died with, like say panic or heartache or fear or frustration or something like that. I believe we can also tap in energetically. So I think I think of things, Claudia, in terms of, of layers. Now, where I live in northern Arizona is not terribly far from a place you may have heard of called the Grand Canyon, which is, I think, one of visually the most, one of the most dramatic places on the planet. And believe me, I've been to a lot of places. But it's just so visually awesome that when you when you go there, you see the layers and the colors of the rocks. So there's yellows and greens and sort of bluish grays and bright reds and browns and stuff. And that's the way I think of things is it's a layered sort of thing. So you could be speaking at one layer, which is the genetic memory. You could be speaking at the soul past life memory. You could be speaking at the racial memory the racial memory that's been carried, like, say, with the Native Americans or the blacks that were brought to this continent as slaves. You could be speaking, or let's say, the Jewish race that has, uh, you know, had the Holocaust and a lot of other kinds of things. You could be speaking with the genetic memory of things that you've inherited. Uh, if you know about uh, homeopathy, you could be thinking in terms of miasms. So, um I think it depends on the layer or the level that you're speaking from. And so for, for my, from my perspective, there are multiple, multiple layers. So now at this point in time, I'm also tapping in on other quote-unquote aspects of self because we are actually, my understanding, multidimensional beings that have aspects that are living in other dimensions. And because the veils are getting thinner, we are getting impressions from those aspects. We might be getting positive. We might, they might be wounded or hurt or scared or having trauma. But that could be overlaying us as well. So that's another layer that I'm tapping in on, as well as very, very ancient times. One of the things that I've been working with the last few years, I haven't really taught this, but I'm working with it, is some people that have had extremely chronic situations, they've not been able to get resolution in any other way, and it may relate, not always, but it may relate back to time in Atlantis. And one of the things that happened in Atlantis, if you've read or studied about that, is that there were experiments done uh, that has to do with the cross 
cross-breeding, so to speak, of human and animal or human and bird or human and fish. So there would be, this is where the stories and the impressions from the Egyptian and the ancient Greek of like the centaurs and things like, they would have the head of a bird and a body of a human or they would be uh, human down to the waist and then a horse the rest of their body. So this actually went on in Atlantis, which was a fifth dimensional culture. After Atlantis, I think the earth fell to third dimension. But actually going back in there, changing and correcting some of the distortions that happened when somebody was part human and part animal. Now, this isn't true for everybody, but it's happening enough that I'm finding patterns with that. And clearing that up has really allowed some substantial healing with some people. Claudia has a follow-up question to that. She says, many, for instance, many Native American Indians or First Nations up here in Canada carry rage from the past. Do we also carry rage from their genetic memory or their past life memories? Do they? Do we carry from our own stuff? Absolutely. I think we. I think we absolutely do. I think we carry the genetic patterns. I think that's part of the difficulty with a lot of the black people that were brought brought to this continent as slaves because they were ripped away from their own heritage, their own ancestor, their own knowing of who they were and what their traditions were, and sort of plopped down in a new country. Uh, for me personally, my heritage, I'm, I don't have, I very much relate to Native American, always felt like I was, and would wake up in the morning and go, there's been a mistake, I'm the wrong color here. Um, but in this lifetime, I am white genetically. I'm half French and half Scott. In fact, my ancestors came on both sides from Canada, uh, from Scotland and, and uh, French ancestry. And um, and I remember, <laughs> I don't, I'm sort of telling on myself, I remember when I saw the, the movie Braveheart. And, and I, after the movie was over, I'm sitting in the theater and I go, oh, now I understand why I don't care much for England. I've been to Scotland and I've been to England as well but I never really cared for England too much myself. I said, now I understand. It's my Scott on both sides, Scott heritage that had a problem with the British or the English rather, rather than let me say British. So I think we do carry these racial memories as well. I have a question from Dino in Paranormal Into the Night, and he is asking, what about children who have very vivid uh stories to say about their past life regression because children are often overlooked and say oh that's just imagination or that's just great great point you're bringing children the veils seem to be very thin when children are quite young and up until three four or five even maybe six or seven years old they may have memories that come through strong memories in some cases and i love to talk to little children even toddlers and say, do you remember this, or where were you before, or who was your other mommy, or something like that. A lot of times they'll just launch into a whole story about that. It's like they they haven't been shut down yet. They haven't been told, oh, you're making this up, and it's not really accurate. And so I've encouraged the children of people that I've known, especially people that have been spiritually awake or metaphysically sophisticated, to allow those memories or keep those memories or record some of that with their children. Absolutely. And there's been some real substantial uh, studies, academic studies, uh, uh, whole organizations for um, reincarnation research that have substantiated and have researched this, uh, particularly in India and some other countries that are very open to these things and found tons of evidence of uh, past life memories in children that were able to be verified in historical situations. Yep. Dino's follow-up question is, how does one reach out to their spirit guides? Probably uh, through meditation, if you can meditate, um, possibly through working with dowsing if you feel that you're a skilled dowser. Um, I suppose you could take a bunch of drugs and risk uh, risk doing that. Um, you could uh, go into a coma. Sometimes that helps, but I wouldn't recommend some of those some of those last ways of doing it. Probably some type of meditation would be the best thing. You can also, if you have access to that, work with a very 
I would say qualified. It doesn't necessarily mean, um, uh, you know, they've got the academic credentials, but a really excellent reputation, really qualified um, psychic or medium, especially someone that has been classically trained um, medium. And that might be a way to be able to access information with your guides. Um, I've been able to do that sometimes in terms of helping people through altered state work like hypnotherapy, et cetera. But be wise and know that just because somebody's dead on the other side doesn't mean they're any smarter than anybody here. So all guides are not especially fully enlightened and fully brilliant. They're just learning the same as we are. So they're not the be-all, end-all answer to everything. We are talking with Sandy Mack tonight on Space Out Radio. Designanewdestiny.com is her website. She deals with past life regression therapy and how healing yourself in the past can help you out today. Nisa from Hawaii has a question referring to ancestors and descendants. How are we able to really get to it? I, and I apologize, I'm having a little bit of computer trouble here, and I just lost the question. Uh, so, Nisa, I do apologize for that. Uh, I'm going to get to another question here in regards to people who have an... Sounds like I lost you there. My computer just crashed on me. You got to bear with me. Here. Okay. I'm trying to relaunch it here. All right. All right. I'm bear on, with me here. I'm on my cell phone here. All right. Bear with me. I'm going to patch you through here. Hold on. Here. Hold on. Here. Hold on. Here. Hold on. And I think we're back. Okay, now I, I, do, I don't think I have I don't think I have access to the chat room, but I'm pretty sure we are back as we are on the air. I'm gonna try and uh Corey, if you could uh just monitor the chat room and make sure everybody can hear yeah. us, that would be absolutely wonderful because I know you're in both chat rooms tonight. Yeah, okay. So, so I'm just I'm just going to give a little rundown of what's happened here. We've had a little bit of a computer failure on my end. For once, it's not a blog talk radio program problem. It is a Dave Scott computer program where my computer literally just overheated and died. That's never a good sign when that happens. 
And so we are going to have to do this commercial free for the last half an hour here. So right before the break, Sandy, if if uh, I could ask you a quick question as uh, Corey starts getting everything kind of organized with our chat rooms again, because I think we are underway in regards to it. My question to you was for people who have with a lot of people who have ET experiences. And one of the things that they are always worried about is what happens when that happens. Because for a lot of people who are taken, they have a, you know, it's not a comfortable situation for them. It's something that has become very, very difficult to live with. So when you're doing past life regression therapy, have you ever had someone who has had ET experience in the past that has carried over to this lifetime? Yes, I have. That's a great question. And I also do work with people that have been, I guess the political correct term now is is contactee, maybe abductee, maybe contactee or something, because there have been people that have had some very good, enlightening, positive, inspiring, healthy, healing experiences with some of the extraterrestrials. Although the people that have come to me professionally for this have usually had people that have been, um, they feel violated, they feel disrespected, they feel like they've had some kind of a trauma thing. And I actually take them up. Well, it's a completely different approach than anybody I've ever known or heard of before has done, which is I actually go up into the ship recover the information, um, terminate the relationship with the violating extraterrestrial, have the implants, devices, microchips, whatever, removed, and kind of restore their sovereignty back. And uh, I do this in an altered state work, yeah. What's it what's like, the, though, Sandy, to go out onto a alien spaceship with the person and say, hey, you have to stop this with this person. You're driving them insane well, to the point of suicide. There there are spiritual laws, there are natural laws, there are man-made laws, and there are spiritual laws that absolutely include non-interference and non-violation. And you can be the sheriff in town and say, look, you're breaking the law. You're doing this without the person's permission. You're doing it, you're misleading, you're using their energy, you're whatever it is, and you can, because you've got the law behind you, because you've got the angelic realm or the higher hierarchy behind them, you can go in there and you can say, you're breaking the law and you can't do this anymore. This person is here at their own free will. They uh, request back your own sovereignty and they request that you stop violating them. You can do that. Is that possible with all extraterrestrial species? Because we hear with the greys that they are more scientists, that they don't really pay attention to what we have. We also have heard that certain types of reptilians and humanoid type beings really don't seem to care when you're pleading for your health or your safety. You don't so plead. Do you don't plead. The sheriff doesn't go in and say, would you please quit hurting this person? The sheriff shows up and he goes, I am the law. The law is behind me. This is the badge. This is the way it's going to be. I don't show up and be kind of a jerk on my own. I show up and I bring the Archangel Michael, I bring the angelic realm, and I bring spiritual law. I don't care who they are. They have to acknowledge galactic and spiritual law because it's above the laws, the man-made or the human or the local laws of any planet. If you want to look at the Star Trek thing, there are certain principles like non-interference, etc. And those 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 hold true. Those hold true. So you don't show up and you don't go, would you please quit hurting me and I'm scared and don't do this anymore. You go in and you say, under the authority of and by the power of blah, 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 whatever, this is what's going to happen. You go in and you state it. I'm here with this person's permission. I'm here asking uh, that all the data be completely removed, released, neutralized, or rendered harmless. That information that you've been affecting them and or their children or the genetic heritage of that. They have a right to ask for this. I'm commanding this. 
If you don't believe me, look outside the window of your ship right now. You thought you were infallible. You thought you had authority. Excuse me, you were confused. Look outside the window right now. You're surrounded by hundreds, perhaps thousands of angels. Now, the new sheriff is in town. Do you have any other questions before you follow through with my request is that you remove the data that relates to this person. Then I'll take them to another another realm, another dimension, and have another aspect of the angelic realm neutralize the implants or the microchips or the etheric implants that have been affecting it. This is not a negotiation thing. This is a statement thing. We are talking with Sandy Mack tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Design a New Destiny is her website. I am very surprised that, you know, that the extraterrestrials, I mean, and let's face it, just like people, there's good extraterrestrials and there's bad extraterrestrials. Does this cover absolutely everything or are you just dealing with the harmful ones? Because people are having good intentions put brought forward by ETs is something that I find very interesting because out of all the extraterrestrial experiences that I have had or Mrs. Space Out Radio have has had, it's been very positive. Yes. So mostly the most of the time the people that have had positive experiences don't come to me for some therapeutic work or for some trauma resolution or problem solving. The people that come to me with this situation or that it shows up in the work that we're doing are people that have been violated or had trauma associated with it. They don't come and say, wow, I had a wonderful experience. You know, let's go clean that up. Does that make sense? It makes total sense. And I hope that helps a couple of our listeners who are listening in on a nightly basis to this show who haven't had those pleasant experiences. My final question on this would be, can they do it themselves or do they need to be having well, someone Well, they probably support? need a little help with it. Um, they, need to have a, they need to be able to go into altered state. If they're a pretty sophisticated meditator, they might be able to do that. As far as breaking ET contact, they would probably certainly have some good understanding of spiritual law, what they can do and what they can't do, to be very clear who their own authority is. They need to know and feel that they can call in on the higher realms of light and be able to access that and be able to use it. And when you go in and you deal with any of this stuff, you need to be absolutely fearless. Absolutely. Because if you're vibrating at a level of fear or desperation or panic, you know spiritually and metaphysically speaking, you're only going to draw more of that to you. So right. it's the same as dealing with discarded entities or demonic forces or any of the dark force stuff. You need to be fearless. Now, you are going to ask a question. Sure. There's there's a question from Marlena. She says she doesn't think she has any spirit guides. She thinks she's on her own. What does Sandy have to say about that? Everyone, my my understanding is that every single person on this planet, including (laughs) Hitler and and (laughs) Donald Trump or everybody, is born with a guardian angel. That could be considered one of the guides. And that being is with that person incarnated in physical form from the moment they're born or from the moment they're conceived till the moment they die. Now, that person may not pay any attention with them. They may not be listening to them, uh, or they may not feel they have access to them, but I have never heard of anybody that did not have some some kinds of guides, some kinds of, certainly a guardian angel was assigned to them and with them the entire incarnation. So she may feel very alone. She may have somebody or something on some other levels telling her that she's alone and lonely or whatever. I'm not going to buy that. I'm not going to buy it. Now, one question that I did have for you, and we talked before the show, that you were going to perform this on me. We got about 20 minutes left. I'm wondering, is that enough time? Sure. It, give me a give me a p- couple of possibilities, a couple of scenarios of something that you might want to. Doesn't have to be the biggest challenge in your whole life, Dave. But give me something that you might want to get some resolution of. Give me a list of maybe two or three. Let me down something that would be useful for demonstration purpose. Okay, I suffer from, and I'm very public about this. I suffer from depression and anxiety. Okay. It, and I will get probably once every couple of weeks a little bit of a panic attack where I start seeing all the negative. 
Uh, I okay. do know. I do know with that that my great grandfather, uh, who I never met, committed suicide due to depression, and okay. the anxiety. I'm not too sure about. The other issue would be that I have, and when I was a child at 11 years old, I spent a couple weeks in children's hospital with an undiagnosed muscular issue. The doctors had thought that it was a problem between maybe a hybrid between a muscular dystrophy and multiple sclerosis. And they were amazed to learn that I was able to ride a bike. They were amazed to learn that I was able to throw a baseball or uh, even ice skate for that instance. So, and this is something where it has battled me. And it usually now as an adult, it comes on with fatigue. Okay. Okay, so those are a couple of choices. Let me just get my pendulum out. Let me just ask if we have permission, and we have your verbal position. I'm getting yes, we have permission. I would just let me ask which would be a priority for demonstration purposes that would be the most useful for Dave to do if if there's past life ties with either one of these. Um, I'm getting the second one, the muscular issue. <laughs> so what I'm going to do um, is... First, just ask for both your and my own guides, angels, and master teachers who are to our highest and best spiritual good, who work in the highest realms of light, to for us to be inside of a pillar of light that extends all the way to the throne realms. And, and it doesn't matter anybody's religion. I would just say the infinite creator God of love and light. So we're asking to be in light. We're asking to bring in the highest realms of support for this, okay? Now, let me ask if there is, if it's correct that there is a past life connection with this muscular issue, I'm getting yes. And do we have permission to work with this? Yes. How many past lives do we need to cover at this point in time to help him get some level of resolution with this? Actually, just one lifetime, okay? All right, you're up for this, Dave? I am ready for this. I'm Got excited. your seatbelt fastened. You're ready to go. Okay. So I'm just going to give you the perimeters that I'm dowsing. Then you're going to tap in on that life. Let me see. It was a lifetime in which you were female. Okay. Let me see about how old you were. Um, quite young, actually. About three years old. So you're a little girl, about three years old. Let me see how long ago this was. about 260 years ago, okay? So what? somebody's got a calculator, they could figure out where that would be. Sounds like it was maybe 17 or 1800s, 260 years ago. Somebody want to figure that out, they can. I'm going to see where this occurred. So we're in Europe, let me see. Eastern Europe, okay. Let me see if it's in the northern part, like up in the Ukraine, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Romania, um, down. It's in southeast Europe, okay. So this could be somewhere like um, Turkey, no, Greece, like Greece, Albania, somewhere in southeast Europe, okay. We don't need to know specifically, Okay, can we, somebody got a calculator at minus 2016, minus 260 years ago. When was that? 1856. Okay, 1856. Okay, great. 1854, pardon me, 1854. Yeah, so it was right around that time, mid-1800s. Okay, so I want you to just trust yourself, trust your impressions, Dave. Kind of close your eyes if you can do that. Go inside. And just trust any impressions coming in. You're a young girl. You're just a little taller there. You're about three years old. Does it feel like you're indoors? Does it feel like you're outdoors? Outdoors. Alone or with other people? Alone. Does it feel like you're in uh, out in the country or in a village or town? It feels like I am uh, on a rocky road. On a rocky road, and you're alone. Okay. How are you dressed? What kind of clothing are you wearing? I have a, what do they call that, like a burqa on the okay. top of my head. Uh, okay. 
um, and it's summertime, and there's a, a dress just below the knees that's like a lightish blue color. Okay. So you're just a little toddler, and you're kind of walking along this rocky road, and you don't feel other people around you. No. Does it feel like you're going someplace? You're coming from someplace? You're just wandering around or playing in the road or what? Just playing outside, and there is stairs nearby, and it's a brick building, and there's a doorway right by, beside it. Does that feel like that might be a place where you live or your house or dwelling place? Yes. Okay. So you live in this dwelling place that... Does that feel like it's part of a village or town or country, you know, yeah. city or something? Okay. I know my I know my mother is inside. Okay, so you're just a little toddler. You're out playing in the street, so to speak, huh? Yes. Okay, all right. So move forward a little bit in time, maybe a few weeks, and I want you to trust any impressions. There might be something that happens, something that occurs. Move forward and see what that is. I see myself on the ground, on like a grassy knoll, falling okay. down on the ground, crying. Okay. And what's happened to precipitate that? That I don't know, but I know my knees are very sore. All right. Imagine you could float up above it and take a look from an observer perspective, Dave, and tell me what happened to that little girl. Why was she crying? Why did she fall down? Was she sick? Was she hurt? Did someone scare her? Did she fall? Uh, what happened? What seemed to trigger that? I think she was chased by dogs. Okay. I, I see two or three dogs as I okay. look down on it, and there's a hole there that I tripped into. Okay. And I don't feel like the dogs attacked me, but they scared me. And when I started running... They chased me, which gave me more fear. Okay. All right. And then what happened? Did someone come and sort of rescue you? Were you able to get up and go home? What happened? Um, Just move forward in time a little bit. You'll be able to see it more clearly. It seems like I'm there a while by myself. Okay, so there's a lot of trauma is what I'm hearing. Yeah. As much... I see one of my legs... As much emotional as physical. Yeah, I see that one of my legs, my right leg, is pointed in a different direction. Oh, okay. So you may have injured yourself when you tripped in the hole as well, fractured something or sprained something or something. Yeah. And I... I, I can hear myself yelling, Mommy, 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 and... All right. Move forward a, a little bit. Let's move forward a few days and see what's going on with you. I see myself huddled in front of a fireplace, wrapped okay. up, and my legs are very bruised. Okay. There was some significant injury there. Move forward about a month or two. Are you able to walk? Is there any type of no. handicap? No. Um, I can hear the different language. It's not English. Okay. Um, basically, it translates into that she will have either never walk again or have problems walking again. Okay. All right. All right, so what I want you to do, I want you to imagine, Dave, that you could step back in time. The conscious adult aware man that you are now, I want you to step back in time to that little girl, that little toddler that you were then. I want you to talk to her in your mind and explain to her that you're from the future. I want you to thank her for that life, for what she went through. It was a very significant life in your own soul growth. I want you to imagine that you can take her out of that scene into a safe place. And I want you to start filling her with white light, however you think of that, divine light, God's light, however you perceive that, like white or golden light. 
as that light starts coming down, I want you to see her being healed. The little legs straightening out, the muscles, the bones, the ligaments, the tendons, the nerves, the lymphatic system, the circulatory system, even the skin. So that as you watch that little girl's legs and her body become perfect and healed according to her divine blueprint. So that she Mm -hmm. can run and jump and dance and twirl and do little cartwheels again. You see that? I do. She said to me, are you an angel? And I said, no, I am you. Okay. And she gets it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, if we had time, which we're not going to spend a lot of time, I would release some trapped emotions with this, which might be shock, panic, fear. That's okay. We can do that at another time. But what I want you to do, as you see her whole and healthy, I want you to tell her to release the cellular memory from this trauma. And I want you to tell her to release the cellular memory from any confused thinking. Got it? Yes. Great. How's she doing now? Good? Big big smile on her face. Excellent. Now I want you to go to your body in present time, and I want you to tell your body, as the grown adult conscious man you are right now in Canada, I want you to tell your body, release the cellular memory from this trauma and release the cellular memory from any confused thinking. It's a strange feeling because my knees feel cold. Okay. Which to me is a good sign. Yeah, you're actually feeling some energetic movement in there. It's like Probably it's like realigning or re-energizing or reactivating or maybe even bringing in some healing energy to that. But wow. you're feeling it in your knees. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, I can. Like my knees, before we started, my knees were quite warm, and now my knees feel like they are very, very cold. And and like any type of breeze going by them, it makes them colder. And usually okay. it's when it and and usually. When uh, my knees are cold, they actually feel at their best. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. So let's see how that goes. I mean, you're welcome to call me back in a few days or do another quickie wow. thing on the radio, and let's see if this takes care of it. It may. Like I said, there might be possibly some emotions that need to be cleared. Let me ask, just for my own information here, if this was a karmic situation, I'm getting yes that you set up in that other lifetime for your soul growth. So without knowing or exploring it, let's say there was another time, maybe back in Egypt where you were mean to your slaves and you beat them or you ran over somebody's legs with a chariot or something. So you chose this for your own soul growth. Does that make sense? There are no innocent victims. There are no innocent victims. Right. And, And if we needed to, we could go back to an earlier life clear, whatever that was, bring that learning forward because they say all time is now. All time exists in present time. So this workshop that I actually teach on this is called time travel. Like we can go in the past, we can go even into the future lives which affect us now and heal and clear and resolve things. But this might, just like it did with Corey, actually take care of the problem. That's amazing. Just amazing, Sandy. I really do appreciate you testing that out on me and for our audience to kind of hear what you were doing. Now, we only have about three and a half minutes left here in tonight's program. And I'm wondering, for our public, they're probably wondering as well, does this help just with emotional scarring or deep scarring or can it help Absolutely. with uh, with uh, but does it help with other things too? Say people who are downtrodden, who have uh, always felt to be like felt the trauma that they're a failure in life or have never been able to reach that goal potential that they feel they so deserve. Yes. It can be useful for any number of things. They can check. If it's not related to past life, it may be related to childhood. 
Situation events or experiences in present time. Yes. Everything doesn't have a past life connection. But my experience after 30, 40 years of this is that chronic situations, especially things we've never been able to get resolved in any other way, often, often, not always, but often has got a past life component. It's one of those layers of the Grand Canyon, one of the layers of looking at things in a specific way. And is this something that will carry on for the next lifetime or lifetimes if it is not cleared now? I think it will be. I think that we are all striving for our divine blueprint or our highest potential, and if something is not resolved, that we'll we'll potentially recreate that, not necessarily in the immediate next lifetime, but sometime point in time in the future until we do get it resolved. So the specific way that I work these days includes not only just the past life, by clearing the emotional components, which are often a key, embedded, trapped, or underlying emotions. I often may include some shamanic work because I'm an initiated shaman with the traditions based out of the, out of the Keto Indians from the ancient Inca tradition. I've spent time in Peru and initiated by the oldest living shamans in Peru. So I may include some shamanic work. So I'm, cool. I'm actually trained in about 70 different modalities of healing. And so I can pull from a variety of different things in the way that I work with. Yeah. Is is there anybody you cannot heal? Well, um, of course. <laughs> People that, for whatever reason, their soul growth, maybe karmically or something, they need to go through or they need to have more experience or they haven't uh, fully learned whatever it is that they need to learn from this. But I do believe like one of my earliest teachers said, is that the wisdom help, helps release the karma. That doesn't always mean that they're completely healed, um, but it means energetically that it's, that it's resolved or that it's healed or they understand why they created it for their soul growth. And they come to honoring that or accepting that or embracing that, that they chose it at some level. Does that make sense? Absolutely. We have about a minute and a half left with you, Sandy Mack, and I would love it if you could uh, tell our audience where they can find you on the Internet, where they can get a hold of you for their own personal healing, and how available are you for booking times? I can do a lot of this work remotely on the phone, just like we did with you. Uh, The best thing to do is contact me through my website, uh, design a new destiny dot com. In other words, if you're going down a destiny path and you don't like it, guess what? You get to design a new one and change that pattern from probability to possibility to whatever. Um, uh, that's probably the best way to get in touch with me. Um, there are some ways there that will contact me directly, and then I could ring you back or um, contact me through email or whatever. Uh, the email is. Sandy, S-A-N-D-E-E-M-A-C, the number 100 at gmail.com. Just say that they that they heard me on your radio station and radio show, and I'll get back with them as soon as possible. Wonderful. Sandy Mack, thank you so much for being on Spaced Out Radio tonight. It was an absolute pleasure. I apologize once again for the technical issue that we have. Now I have to worry about getting my computer fixed, but that's a whole different ballgame. Maybe you could send some remote viewing to that and make, fix it. Yeah, we'll call it computer angels. Exactly. Computer angels. Yeah. Thank you so much, my dear. It's a pleasure. We'll do it again soon. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Andy. Thanks, Corey. Thanks for your bravery. I appreciate it so much, honey. That's great. Do you have a topic or guest you'd like to hear on Spaced Out Radio? Email us, dave at spacedoutradio.com. Send us a quick message on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio or a message on our Facebook page, Spaced Out Radio. Once again, here's Dave Scott. And once again, I want to say thank you for holding on. I apologize about the technical difficulties. I think I may need a new computer. It just went poof in the middle of the show. You know, couldn't have done that earlier. But karma, 
whatever it is. doesn't matter. Hey, we got Sandy Mack back on. We had a great show. I want to say thank you to Sandy Mack once again. Her website, designanewdestiny.com, if you want to check it out. Tomorrow night on the show, we are going back to the SOR Roundtable. We have a panel of guests who will join us. We're going to change it up a little bit. We are going to do more paranormal, more ufological, extraterrestrial cryptid talk we also want to encourage your participation with phone calls and questions from the space out radio chat room paranormal into the night and paranormal forum as well thank you so much for being with us remember you can follow us on twitter at spaced out radio you can give our facebook page a like spaced out radio show you can also ask to join our private spaced out radio group and podcast central on instagram follow us at dave scott sor and of course youtube Subscribe to our Spaced Out Radio Show channel. Once again, our website, spacedoutradio.com. I will be back with, hopefully, no computer errors in exactly 22 hours. I hope you join us. Once again, I apologize for the computer going down, but we made the show happen. Thank you so much for being with us. Much love to you all. Be safe out there, and we will talk to you tomorrow night. Bye-bye.